Happy Father's Day. Happy Juneteenth. Happy VBS celebration. Arise and shine. Love has come. Joy has come. And hope has come. And happy Southern Gospel celebration. Thank you, praise band and choir. We have in our midst, added to our amazing praise band and choir, the gifted and talented Miss Shelley New. And Shelly is here. Yes, yes, give her a ring. <laughs> There's some information about Shelly you'll find in your bulletin. She teaches in the, in the North Texas area up in McKinney. Um, and so you can't necessarily see her teaching every day, but there is a group that she's involved in called the Bodarks. And so there's some information about there. I bet you have a Facebook page and other things that people can find about the Bodarks. So Shelly, it is great to have you with us as you offer us a, a space and a way of praising God that uh, is new and different in this space today. So we thank you for that. As we enter into this time of worship, uh, Shelly's actually going to offer us a prelude. And it's my understanding it will be Amazing Grace. So let us open our hearts and our minds to the gift of God's presence in this moment as we celebrate that amazing grace in our time together. Welcome.
Amen and amen. Again, Shelley, thank you so very much. Again, a word of welcome to you this day as we celebrate Father's Day, Vacation Bible School, Juneteenth, and all that God is in our lives. It is great to have you with us. Friends, you'll see at the front of the altar here a group of aloe vera plants that our uh, outreach ministries has helped to prepare and to cultivate for this special day. We did something similar on Mother's Day. Before you leave worship today, uh, those of you who have been fathers or acted as fathers, and I know several volunteers this week uh, gave a fatherly presence to our Vacation Bible School in beautiful, beautiful ways. We want to honor you with that gift of healing and hope uh, as you leave this place, so be sure to take one with you. And if we run out, we'll get more. We'll get more. Again, it is great to have you with us. I want to invite you to stand in body or in spirit. We see people briefly as we're walking in. You don't, may not get a chance to turn around and see who's with you today. Share the love of Christ with you, each other as we get ready to join in our call to worship. Well, glad you're here. Okay, friends, let us join now in this call to worship together. Praise the God of Israel, who is steadfast and strong in the wilderness. Our hope is in God. Praise the God of the lost, who is our rock and our help in times of need. Our help is in God. Praise the God of Jesus Christ, who makes us children of the beloved. Our life is in Christ. Amen. Good morning, everybody. If you would remain standing and turn in your hymnals to hymn number 133, that's hymn 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, hymn 133. Let's sing all three verses. As you've noticed in this space, maybe a little bit more of a tropical feel that we have around here. This place is called Adventure Island. And I want to invite the kids, uh, and if you were a volunteer, want to come up as well and share in this fun time, come up for this time together. We're going to talk a little bit about the uh, Vacation Bible School. Children's time, come on down. <laughs>
Amen and amen. Well, y'all are already seated. Y'all are standing up. Let me borrow your microphone if I could, please. So, there's a few more people in this room than the last time we were in here. And Athena, what did we do this week? Athena's going to get real quiet on me, aren't you? I know. You are. That's okay. We talked about, oh, I think I've got some things here on my screen. Let me see. What is this? Oh, nope, it's on here. Give me a second with my handy dandy gadget here. Oh, that sure is a lot. Yeah, everybody dizzy. We talked about a special verse. Do you remember what it was? Arise, shine, your light has come. The Lord's glory has shone upon you. And Miss Kathy has been really good about reminding us each day there's a light. Would you mind helping me out, Miss Kathy? The first light is the light of love. And it never, ever goes out. We, what did we call those, Pastor Wally? We called them infinity lights. Do you remember that? Infinity lights that never, ever go out. The second one, if you'll hold the bottom, the light of joy. <laughs> and the third one is the light of hope. Hope. That's right. And so every day, Miss Kathy, who's going to use her best voice again, we're going to repeat after her and say the words. Arise, shine. With love. Arise, shine. With joy. Arise, shine. With hope. With hope. And I love all of that. And so I'm going back over here because we've still got a few more pictures to look at. Let me see what some of these, what we did in some of these. Huh? That first night, we talked about God's love and creation. Do you remember, Athena? Do you remember all the animals that came out? You don't remember all the animals? I bet Edwin remembers all the animals that came out. There was a... Snake snake, oh. Athena. Ooh, what Athena did not... Snake snake. Two Athenas. Athena and Athena. <laughs> Athena the snake and Athena the beautiful girl. And a kinkajou, and I think everybody went wild when the kangaroo came bouncing down the steps. So we got to hear how, that God loved the world so much that God made everything out of nothing and brought us the animals too and the people. And there's another picture of them. Oh, and an iguana, another of Athena's favorite, yeah, with <laughs> eyes looking all over the place. <gasps> then there were some crafts with Miss Kathy. What kind of crafts did y'all do? Oh, y'all aren't talking very much. Let me give you a chance to do that. What kind of crafts? You don't remember? Lighthouse. Lighthouse, yeah. And there were some crosses. Oh, crosses. Some crosses. And some crosses, that's right, that's right. And then we had, oh, some kind of science with the Clifford family. What did they do? I think we still have some. Oh, there's yep. one over there. <laughs> there were six of them up there on Wednesday night, and somehow they floated all down. What were those? Balloons. Balloons. That, Make them go down faster. Oh, yeah. And you put. Can make them bounce. And you can make them bounce, and you put salt water in, and you move them all around, learn lots of things about that. And then the next picture. Oh, I think there was some music in this place. Was there some music in this place? Yeah. Do you all want to share one of the songs that you learned? So they, we have a couple of folks who are not at VBS, and I want you to know you don't need to be. We also have a lot of folks who aren't at VBS, and you don't need to be because you know this one. Deep. And why, right? Am I seeing everybody shake their hands because their heads because you're very excited? But you can't just sing it, you have to do the motion. So, Anna, you want to come down here? Yeah, Miss Brittany? No, I see you trying to hide this. I'm getting out of the way. <laughs> so, will y'all please don't just make us stand up? Y'all will be able to sing it. Okay.
So, and of course, Beacon was here. Ha, ha, ha. Had a good time with that, with the deep and wide? No, but we're not going to go there. Beacon's going to be quiet today. <laughs> so there's one special thing. So we learned all about God's love, right? That that light is always with us all the time, light of love and hope and joy. And we want to say a very special thank you to the people in this room and far beyond that helped. If you're in your, look in your bulletin, there is a list, I believe we came to 34 people that volunteered to help all you kids to know about love and joy and hope. So we want to thank all that are here and those of you that are in the room. There are plants that have been brought in. If uh, We want to say thank you to those after the service. If there's one you want to claim for yourself, uh, we would love to say thank you for that. But I'm going to take just a moment, if I can find my insert, and say, first of all, thank you to Troop 852 and for their volunteers that came out, along with, of course, the wonderful and talented Miss Claudia Howe. Kathy Briggs, Emily, Keith, McKenna Briggs, Alex Budden, Lisa and David Burris, Wally Butts, Bonnie Knight, David Knight, Wendy Clifford, Jeremy Gray, Noah Clifford, Jennifer Gatlin, Ron Gilliland, Brittany Gilliland, Wilhelmina Gilliam, Ava Greer, Joyce Hammond, Claudia Howe, as I said, Anthony, Bethany Howe, Juliana Lee, Melissa Logan, Caden Macklin Bowens, Evie uh, Polino, Reagan Pruitt, Peggy Robinson, Kate Rogers, Vonda Sutton, and Ember White. That is the light that never goes out. A certainty that God will provide in this space an opportunity for each of us to let our light shine. So thank you for your dedication in the midst of moving and rolling with the flow throughout this week. We give thanks to God for each of you and for the way God has moved in this space and will continue to do so with every breath and step that we take. Can we all say a prayer together? Can you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for your light, for the light of love, for the light of joy, and for the light of hope. These lights never, ever go out. Help us to shine your light right here in this place and every place we go. We love you so much. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. We continue in our worship now as we come to a time of prayer. And I know many are on your hearts and on your minds this day. We, we want to lift up, as we know, several members have uh, contracted or come in close contact with COVID, as happens uh, in this time. Uh, be mindful of, of Penny and Barbara as they uh, deal with that. Also, many of you have been in prayer for David McKee uh, and for his partner, Aldo. Um, we got word, Aldo shared the news this week, that David has, uh, in, in addition to all the, the things that he's dealing with, has been diagnosed with Parkinson's. And so, oh my goodness, Aldo <laughs> and David, it is such a joy to see you in this place. An absolute joy and a privilege to have you with us, friends. Thank you for being here. Our thoughts and prayers are with you. As, uh, as you deal with so many things, so many steps forward and so many steps back, you have an amazing partner and son who love you and care for you, and I know many in this church are uplifting you in prayer on a daily basis, but it's, it's a pleasure to have you with us this morning to worship. I also understand that there's a birthday boy in the house, one John Flanagan. How many months? How many years? 19? <laughs> Plus 71, all of them, 90 years old this weekend. So we give thanks to God. Thanks to God for your life and love that you share in this place. Also, um, we are, are grateful, as I mentioned, for the gift of our fathers. Um, those are Family relationships are always difficult. There is the perfect love of God that we all seek to emulate, and I know days such as Father's Day and Mother's Day can be beautiful and wonderful and, and great gifts for us. It can be a struggle 
for many as well, especially a, a close relationship that is, uh, is separated now by death, but that, that love continues. A relationship that may never have gotten to be the place where either wanted it to be, and yet there is that certain hope, that certain gift of forgiveness and, and newness of life that God calls us to enter into with every breath and step that we take. So it is in gratitude for the fathers, for those who have acted as fathers, for the men of this world who seek to shine that light of Jesus' love into every child in this world. We give thanks to God on this day. I want to mention as well this celebration of Juneteenth. You've heard the name Opal Lee, this celebration of the freedom of all people. June 19th, 1865, when word finally got that that Emancipation Proclamation had been written some two years earlier and the slaves that were in Texas were finally set free. They'd been freed, but no one seemed to let them know. That desire for freedom continues to this day. And I know we get wrapped up in so many concepts of what is what, but what is right and what is good are the facts of the world that we live into. The facts that one has lived out of this set of un understanding of our story and another out of this understanding of our story, and all of it is one glorious story together. A struggle for hope and for joy and for freedom. And that struggle doesn't end until all of us are free. Black, white, Asian, LGBTQ, of all understanding that each is a perfect and precious gift of God. And that is our hope for the world on this celebration of Father's Day, on Juneteenth Day, as we celebrate the light of God's love in this place. That is why we are here, to love and to lift up. As we enter in now into our time of prayer, I offer these words for us as we enter our hearts and our minds into the presence of the living God, as we enter briefly into a moment of silence. Loving, gracious God, for the gift of this day, the gift of the celebrations that are here, the challenges that we face, the needs that are on our hearts, the joys that are overwhelming, all of them are present to you now. And so we pause in this moment to be still, to allow our spirits to be at rest as we hear, share, and respond to your presence. Loving, gracious God, you are bigger than big. Larger than large, you are more awesome than the word awesome can describe. And we gather in this moment to give you thanks for your presence in our lives, to give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, and for the movement of your Holy Spirit among us in this space, wherever we are as we worship you in this moment. During this season of renewal, we gather to thank you for each of our stages of life. And gracious God, those stages of life can be likened to that of a flower. God, some of us are like the seed in need of, of transformation, not knowing what we are to become, but knowing and trusting you and your infinite wisdom, believing that we can be transformed by the renewing of our minds and our hearts and spirits. And still, God, some of us are caught up in acknowledging that we must throw, uh, go through a little dirt. There in the dirt of environments and society and even, Lord, yes, in the midst of your church, we grow and we receive nutrient from the gift of the earth, the dirt. We expand, we grow, we develop stems and leaves that help provide nutrients for our growth. Lord, we promise to become beautiful blooms, flowers that continue to grow while producing pollen for the world. May our pollen be our way of spreading the good news of Jesus Christ in places that only the vast wind of the Holy Spirit can carry us. Let us respond to your good news by spreading the good news in places that will germinate new seeds for growth. Oh God, let our bloom produce a scent that will attract others. Let our scent be a testimony to tell of your saving grace through the love of Jesus Christ. Lord, we know a scent will remain long after a bloom has been removed. Gracious God, we know that flowers are picked for their beauty. 
They were placed in places that are not their natural habitat. Help us, O oh God, when we are picked, that we may continue to be as beautiful as we can for as long as we can in places that need the beauty of your presence. In the midst of our desire to draw closer to you, O oh God, there are needs that are on our hearts and on our minds. And we lift them to you now, either in the silence of our hearts or aloud now with our lips. For Tommy Robinson, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Sonny, Suzanne, and Pat, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Ron and Meredith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Riley, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Cassandra, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Rodney Wilson, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Victoria, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we've been reminded this week, the ways we are nourished fully is by your light, your light that never, ever goes out, your light of love, your light of joy your light of hope. All these things we pray in the precious name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. We continue now in this season of renewal. If you're a guest among us or haven't been with us for the last few weeks, we've been looking at what it means to be in covenant with God. We've been reading a book and studying alongside the gifts of a, of a promise made by God and one that God asks us to fill in those promises we, as we make covenant with God. A desire to be as one and we're aiming towards being able to pray this prayer of covenant that John Wesley prepared for us. That is that season of renewal, that is that hope, that is this time as we come out of pandemic into pandemic-ish, into maybe back again, this strange dance that is in, in part of our lives now. It's an opportunity for us to clear our hearts, our thoughts, our minds, to hit that reset button so that we may be fully present to the God of covenant in our lives. And today we turn to Exodus chapter 9. One of the lights that we didn't get to go to in Vacation Bible School was the light of trust. So we have a fourth light to, to light today, that light of trust, as we hear of the story of Moses and the Israelites, their movement into and toward the wilderness, and we come in the midst of that journey looking at Exodus chapter 19. If you'll take your pew Bible, you'll find that on page 64 of the First Testament, 64, and we'll begin in verse 1 of chapter 19. On the third moon, after the people of Israel had gone forth out of the land of Egypt, on that day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. And when they set out from Rephraim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, they encamped in the wilderness. And there Israel encamped before the mountains. And Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him out of the mountain and saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the people of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice, if you will keep my covenant, you shall be my own possession among all the people. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words which the Lord had commanded him. 
And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people of the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Lo, I am coming to you in a thick cloud, with the people may hear, and that when I speak with you, and may also believe you forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you pray with me? Loving, gracious God, for the gift of this day, this gift of this moment, this opportunity that we have of letting go of who we are and holding on to all that you are, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of all us gathered here, that all of this will be acceptable to you, for you alone are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So this week, in the first week, we talked about uh, confiding in God as one of the first steps of preparing to make this covenant vow, this marriage vow, this promise to God, that God is faithful in God's promises to us, and God calls us to respond, to be in covenant, to live as God would have us live, and ultimately, as we know, to live in the ways of Jesus Christ, who brought the fullness of the law for us to understand and to share with the world. Second week was... Uh, uh, composing our spirit and finding the importance of placing our priority above all things. Confiding in God, understanding that in that time of confession that we break ourselves down into what we are at our core. Able to have the freedom that God accepts us to our core in who we are. And then having received that gift of knowing that you are a precious and beloved child of God, that God calls you to live into the fullness of his love, we, console, uh, we, uh, we compose our spirits. That is, that we begin to take seriously this call that God has upon our, our lives. And today, if you've been reading along in the study, we're looking at this idea of claiming the covenant, claiming the promises of God this day. To help us understand this, and it's maybe a little related, you may have wondered why I would talk about a flower in the pastoral prayer, but there is a children's book that many of you may know about. It's called Hope for the Flowers. Anybody ever seen that? Oh good, you're in for a treat. <laughs> this is a very brief recap of a beautiful book, The Hope of the Flowers. It's a story of two caterpillars trying to find the meaning of life. One, one striped caterpillar, one yellow caterpillar in the midst of all these other caterpillars. And the striped caterpillar insists that it knows the way of finding the meaning of life. And that meaning is to climb above all the other caterpillars. And so this, they found this mound of caterpillars climbing up, trying to get to the very top. And they begin their ascent and they're crawling over all these caterpillars who are also trying to crawl over all these other caterpillars. All these legs entwined and tangled as they try to reach to the top of the caterpillars. And they move and they move and some slide down and others are up and some fall and they keep going up and up and up and finally the striped caterpillar gets to the very top and he can't hold on because there's so many legs trying to crawl and bring this caterpillar down and he's struggling and the yellow caterpillar says, this is not the meaning of life. It's not here. This is all there is. There's nothing more. I'm going back down. And the striped caterpillar is persistent and says, no, I'm stubborn. I'm staying here. I want to be on top. This is what it's all about. And so the other yellow caterpillar makes its way down. And that striped caterpillar continues to struggle, trying to stay on top while others are climbing. And some climb on top, and then he climbs his way back up. And it's over and over and over again, the striped caterpillar losing his way, getting back on top, back down, up again. He is exhausted. Time goes by, and he looks, and he sees on the horizon this beautiful yellow butterfly. And as the yellow butterfly approaches the top of that mound of caterpillars, the striped caterpillar sees that yellow butterfly, and as it draws close, he notices something in the eyes. He notices something in the eyes of that butterfly that he recognizes. And he realizes that this was the yellow caterpillar that he'd known. What had happened? How could this beautiful creation come as he's trying to struggle with all the others? And the butterfly flutters away, and the striped caterpillar decides that it's not going to try that struggle anymore to stay on top of the mound. It decides to climb its way back down. The beautiful part of this story, if you notice, it's not the story of hope for the caterpillars. The title of the book is Hope for the Flowers. 
You see the, the caterpillar trying to find meaning in its life, all about me, all about me. It's not about them. It's about doing what they were created and called to be, to become. And we know butterflies, beyond the beauty that they have, is that they help to pollinate the flowers. They help to move from stem to stem, and new growth comes. Growth comes in many, many different ways in this world. But for the caterpillar to become a butterfly, it's good for the flowers. We have an understanding of our faith that we have inherited or passed down or misunderstood that has helped us forget what our purpose is. We began that first Sunday by thinking about what it means to be a person of faith of a vending machine God. That vending machine God, that that God is a dispenser of whatever I need. The purpose of my faith is to get what I need. Today we're talking about covenant faith. Vending machine God is not covenant faith. There's another faith that we've been led and and that we carry on and that we imbibe in all the time, and that is the consumer faith. Whatever I want, I deserve. Wherever I want to be, I'm upset with somebody here, I'll just go someplace else. I I don't like the sounds in this place. I don't like the community. Somebody offended me. Well, I'll just pick up and find a new place. No. We're, We're a people of covenant, not consumerism. We don't test and try. We stay. Because it's not about us. It is about God. And sometimes we find ourselves thinking that we have a self-help faith. That where God is helping me become the best me that I can be. There's truth in all of these. But oftentimes as you look around, how we emblazon ourselves, how we lift ourselves, how we carry ourselves, we're usually concerned about me. How I can get something out of this. Improve myself, yes, but it's about me. Church is not a people of me. It is a church of people of we. We have caterpillars struggling to be on top. Watching out for caterpillars. When God calls the caterpillars to watch out for the flowers. We have Christians who are seeking to be on top, to be made whole, to be right, but only thinking of that one narrow path for myself and for others. When God says, no, your call is about you, but not only about you, it is a call for the world. Covenant faith. Covenant faith is an understanding that God is holy. God is majestic, God is hope, God is love, God is joy, God is truth, God is good, God is the God of salvation for all, for all the world. And God calls out in the midst of that, as he called Moses at the burning bush, calls us out and God says, you are mine and I am yours. That's the covenant that we're living into. This covenant faith is the understanding that this God of, of all those gifts chooses to be our God, and we claim and join in the work of God for the hope of the world. Many of you will recall the name Rich Mullins. Rich Mullins was one, we sing Awesome God, Step by Faith, so many countless. If you were a kid in the 80s, you heard him whether you were Christian or not. Rich Mullins was one of the most popular artists in our country. Rich had some words, and I'm looking for them because I want to get them right. And maybe I'll just have to remember them off the top of my head. Rich Mullins said this, God did not put you in this world for you to be happy. God did not put you in this world for you to be pious. Heaven knows we have enough pious people in this world. No, God placed you in this world for the world. God placed you in this world for the world for right now in this moment of time to live 
that light of hope and joy and peace and truth and goodness and mercy and compassion, all those attributes of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has called you to be that, to share that. You are the exact perfect image of God. And yet we are each unique. We are all at different stages of our lives. Some young and able are bound upstairs two or four at a time and others not so young, Johnny, not quite as young. And yet God has a need for your presence in this world to light that light, to be in covenant, to listen to what God wants us to do. And so we're trying to find our way to, to be in covenant with God. Are we ready to be in full covenant with God? We hear about covenant several times. As I mentioned, there is this promise of Moses and the Israelites and how he brings them to the promised land. There's covenant that comes throughout the Old Testament, the First Testament. It begins with Abram. You remember Abram? Abram means father of our ancestors. Abram and God enter into a conversation. God makes a covenant with Abraham and says, if you will follow my ways, I will make you, not Abram, father of our ancestors, but Abraham, father of the multitude, be my person, for I am your God. Moving from a father of what was to the father of all that what will be, the multitudes to come. His life was no longer about himself. His life was for the now, for the world right now. And Sarai, <clears throat> excuse me, Sarai is there, and her name changes. <clears throat> Sarah, Sarai becomes Sarah. All these changes in the Bible, you notice how that there's something changes in a person when that happens because their life is now shaped by the God who shapes who they are. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but when you were baptized, the pastor that was there asked, what name is given to this child? When I was baptized, my mom said, Walter Ray. Now, my full name is Walter Ray Butts Jr., but she only said Walter Ray. Walter Ray, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Do you know why my last name wasn't used? Do you know why your last name wasn't used when you were baptized? It's because your last name, my last name is no longer Butts. Glory be. I love that. <laughs> my last name in becoming baptized is Christian. You and I share the exact same last name because in our baptism. We claim no longer that we are of this world, but we are of Christ. All of us, Walter Ray Christian, Melissa Lynn Christian. I don't know everybody's middle names, but you get where I'm going with that. God has claimed us and named us and renamed us. And God is asking us and calling us to make covenant. John Wesley looked at what it meant to be in covenant, and you have the copy in your insert here. This idea of us no longer being our own, but to be God's, that God would put us to doing something or putting us to suffering, to lay aside for something or to be made great. However God chooses to use us, we'll be attentive to that. We yield all to God's good pleasure and disposal, and then we claim, so be it. For you are mine and I am yours. In a few weeks, we will share this. I hope and pray that you're starting to pray this prayer. If you haven't been taking it home with you, take it. Read it. It's a daily, it's a renewal. It's not a once and done kind of prayer. It's one that we pray daily that we may be aligned with God's love and God's world. Here's the point, though. How do we do that? How do we make this covenant? And that's where I get to the point of the title of this sermon. It's time to let go. And it's time to hold on. Those of you that have been looking at the book by uh, McGray de Vega, he makes a beautiful analogy, and it looks something like this. A trapeze artist moving from one bar to the next. That trapeze artist has to trust that the other one is there to catch them, to hold on to them, that they're not going to let go. So there in the midst of the air, what we're called to do is to let go of that bar. But do you know what that bar is? It's a really hard thing to let go of. It's control. It's certainty. It's a need that we all have to make sure we're okay. That's truly what all of us long to be, is to be safe, 
secure, have a means of providing for food and sustenance, having joy and love in our lives. There is not a single soul on the face of this earth that longs for that very thing. And too often, too many people think the only way for that to happen is for me to have control, to make sure it happens no matter what. And God is calling us as we're hanging on to that trapeze bar, saying you're just swinging and swinging and you're not getting anywhere. But I've got something for you. I want you to let go and I want you to hold on to me. That's how we make that move from a life that is looking for a vending machine God that provides me what I need and what I want, that's going to make me the best that I can be. All of that is provided by the God if we let go of that control and hold on to all that God is. Yes, we become the best that we can be. We have all that we need. We have what we want, the love and the joy in the world. But the, all of it comes for the world. That is the light and the love of Christ that we're called to accept, to move on a daily basis, to try to get it right. And God says, don't worry, I'm going to catch you again and again and again. You slip, I've got you. Just know that you can let go of what you want to be, what you think you have to be, and be mine. Be mine. May it be so. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So as our friends are making their way back up here, I have a few announcements, and I'll ask if the ushers will be making their way down. I'm doing things a little bit different, so if the ushers can get ready to come down to share the plates. Um, Again, we want to say thanks to everybody that's here to share in our Southern Gospel celebration today. And again, Shelly, thank you for your time and for the, um, the boat arcs and others that have lent you to us this day. Also want to continue to say thanks for bringing in your bottled water and your used grocery bags. David mentioned yesterday it's the grocery bags. They really need those used grocery bags so that people can get the food from sharing life and get it home safely and securely. So please keep bringing those down. And David, thank you for your faithfulness of getting it into their hands. We had family game night a couple of weeks ago. We had a great time and we're going to do it again. Friday night, July 8th, from 6.30 to 8 p.m., bring your games, bring a snack. We'll have popcorn. We'll be here. Um, I think, we, what else did we play? We played dominoes. Keith, what else did we play? We played categories and played some card games and others. And so whatever is on your heart, you bring it, and we'll have a great time together. And then finally, our, our book club gathering on July the 10th at 11.45. There's information about what they're reading and how you can be a part of that in your worship bulletin today. And again, just a great thanks to everyone involved in the Vacation Bible School and seeing the light and love of God in this place. Finally, as we prepare for our offering, I want to invite the ushers to come forward at this time as I offer a prayer for all of us. Loving, gracious God, we give you thanks for the abundant light that you shine into our hearts and in this space. We pray your blessing upon us as we respond with the light of the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, that it may be used to shine your love within these walls and far, far beyond. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
seated. And so we give thanks to God for all that God is. And as we've heard about covenant, heard about changes of names being renewed and, and given a new purpose for life, the real purpose of life, we celebrate it in the gathering around of this table. If you're among us, we are continuing to use the small containers for juice and for um, uh, a wafer there. Those of you joining at home, we hope that you have a, a bread, water, juice, whatever is on hand that you may share. It doesn't matter what you have so much as that you are gathered with us in this moment, in this time to celebrate the full presence of Christ in this meal. And so we remember on the night in which he gave himself up for us that he gathered with his disciples and he took bread. He gave thanks to God and he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup, and again he gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ that we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy, living, and unified gift of presence of your love in this world. And gracious God, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Make us one in ministry with each other, one in ministry to all the world until you come in final victory, and we feast together at your heavenly banquet. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, the precious body of Christ, the bread of heaven, given in love for you. And the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, poured out in love for you. Let us pray. Loving, gracious God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you reveal yourself fully to us. Help us rise from this meal, that we may be beacons of light and hope and joy to all the world, so that all may know the fullness, the freedom of life, one and all, all in one, and all in you. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So an invitation for you this week is to let go. <laughs> let go of that need for control, for everything to be just so, and allow God to be God and to hold you and enfold you and empower you to make a difference for this world. That is our claim. That is our purpose. That is our covenant and promise that God makes to us and we respond to him. Invitations also made if you're seeking a church home that's seeking to live in that light of God with every fiber that we have, we invite you to join us as we sing this closing song together, Standing on the Promises. Hymn number 374, if you will stand as you are able, Standing on the Promises, verses 1, 2, and 4. That's hymn number 374. do yourself but you've especially outdone yourself today so we're so very grateful for you so as you go into this world celebrate the gift of fatherhood gentlemen in the room please take a plant with you celebrate the perfect gift of the father's love in you this week as you go from this place continue to celebrate juneteenth the hope and the desire for all people to be made free opal lee said this is a celebration for everybody because when all of us are free then we are all truly free Go from this place celebrating the light of hope and joy and love everywhere you go. And go now with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon each and every one of you and give you his peace right now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. This is light of mine. Shout.